I'm going to edit my piranha plant to have um, uh, some additional methods in it. So if I'm thinking of like the game Mario, um, then when Mario shoots a fireball at a piranha plant, it wipes out the plant. The pipe still stays there, um, but the plant is gone. So it's basically in a permanently down state. So I'm going to make a function called uh, fireball that will do some various things to my plant. So let me grab this and go back in here. Paste it. Add in my scope of solution operator. And what I want a fireball to do is automatically make the plant lower. Um, so I already have a function that does that, right? I have this function called lower and I'm inside the class and the purpose of uh, what I'm doing right now is I want to show you if you're inside the class and you want to call one of the methods that is also inside the class then you don't have an instantiated object um, to use to call it so what I mean by that is back in the driver I have plant one and plant two those are instances of my class and when I call the methods out here I put the name of the instance, a dot, and then the, the function or method name. But if I'm inside the class, I don't actually have an instance because I'm, I'm modeling the class itself. And all I have to do to call a function um, inside the class is know the name of it so I can tell Fireball to automatically trigger the lower function. Maybe I have it print. Um, so that's how it'll look different from lower. So if I go back in my driver... Let me get rid of some of this stuff here, just so we can see what's happening. And let's have uh, plant two get hit Oops, with fireball. Um, it should automatically cause the same action that my lower function did and print an additional method message with it. So let's just see if that works. Yeah, so there's my hit with fireball. Um, it grabs the code that was in lower and implements that itself. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to show you. The second thing is, um, what if I want to pass one of these objects to a function? What does that look like? Well, um, let's just have a function that prints out information about the plant. So let's say um, print info, and I'm going to pass in a piranha plant. So my type is piranha. Um, it's an object, so I want to pass it by reference in case there's like a huge number of, of fields in there or something. It's a pretty big thing. So just like with strings or vectors or matrices, I want to pass it by reference. Um, let's just call it P to make it quick to code. And inside here, um, I can print some information about it. So let's call it the title plant info. Okay, and let's print out uh, color. And to get to the color again, I have to use the accessor method get color. And that's really all the information I have. So uh, this is not that extensive a thing. Maybe I want to put it in a nice little chart. Let's see this. Slashes surround this so that you can see it's distinct on the screen. I'll copy that piece that down below it too. Okay, so I've got this function. Um, it is generalized so that it will work for any piranha plant. So I can come down here and I can call um, this function print info for both my plants. So let's do that. Print info. I'm going to get plant one. And then print info, plant two, and when I call this and run it, there's my info for plant one, the first color is red, my plant info for plant two is blue. So if I want to pass a, uh, an object to a function as a parameter, again, mark it by reference, um, give it a generic name, you can call any of the accessor methods, and then when you call this function, you pass it a particular instance variable, and it will grab the contents and values from that.